Hey everyone, it's Mr. Wistar here again. Um, in this lesson, we're going to talk about how to use methods uh, to make Boolean comparisons between objects. Remember, in the lesson about using comparison operators, we said that you can't use those operators when you're trying to compare two objects because Java really doesn't know how you're supposed to compare two objects uh, of a certain class to each other. So we're going to talk about how to compare those objects using methods. Um, we're going to talk about why you can't use those operators and then we're going to talk about the two main methods that you're going to need to use one of them is called equals and the other one is called compare to so just to review again remember this whole unit is about conditional execution it's the ability for your program to um, execute different sets of instructions based on the current state of what's going on in your program and it allows your program to be a lot more flexible because it can take a different path each time that you run it. Now, why can't you use operators uh, or with your objects? Well, one reason, as we said, is that Java doesn't know how to compare things. I mean, if you have two student objects, what does it mean for one of them to be less than the other? Every object class defines its own ordering scheme, and so there's no way that Java could know ahead of time what makes one object less than or greater than another one. Um, the other reason is if you use the equality operator, the equal equal operator, with two object references, your program will actually compile and run, um, but it's not going to work the way that you expect it to, because what the equality operator does with object references is it tests to see if they both point to the same object in memory. and even if the two, even if you have two object variables that point to different objects that are identical to each other, the equality operator will still return false. So let's see an example of that. So here we have a program where we create two rectangle objects you can obviously see are exactly the same as each other. They both have the same coordinates and the same dimensions. But if you try to print out whether those two object references are equal to each other, your program will print false. And the reason for that is that they're not pointing at the same thing. If you draw a picture, if you imagine a picture of the objects in memory, the two variables have to be pointing at the exact same object in order for equal equal to return true. And that's why we can't use it. If we do want to test for equality between two objects, we have to use a method called equals. Now the good news is that uh, this method is defined for every object. Um, it's part of the object class which is sort of the great 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 grandparent of all object uh, classes and the way it works is it takes as a parameter a, another object of the same type and then it returns true if the two objects are identical or false if they're not. Um, now the last note here on this page anyway is just a really important caution make sure that the thing that you're putting in the parentheses for the parameter matches the type of the object that you're calling equals on. If the two objects are not the same, your program will compile and run, but as soon as it gets to that part, your program will crash. So here's another example, going back to our original set of code with our rectangles here. Now if we call r1.equalsr2 instead of r1 equal equal r2, r1.equalsr2 will return true because those two objects are identical to each other. Okay, uh, on the other hand, um, the other side of uh, using comparison methods with objects is the inequality test, which is a method called compare to. Now, unlike equals, it's not necessarily defined for every type of object, even the classes that you create. In order for a class to use the compare to method, it has to implement an interface called comparable. Now, we're not going to worry about implementing interfaces for a while, so you're not going to need to write classes that implement comparable in any sort of basic requirements for any lab assignments, at least not for a while. Um, but it's similar to equals in that it takes as its parameter an object, um, but it's different in what it returns. Uh, because if you think about it, when you compare two objects to each other, uh, the there can be three possible uh, relationships between them. Either A can come before B, it can be equal to B, or it can come after B. 
And what you'll end up with is a different integer value in each one of those cases. If a comes before b, then compare to will return a negative value. If a is equal to b, it'll return 0. And if it's greater than b, it'll return a positive number. Now, notice I didn't say what negative or what positive number. You can't predict ahead of time what the exact value will be. All you care about is that it's less than 0, equal to 0, or greater than 0. So here's an example if we take a look at um, this class, uh, set of code. And it's important to remember that every comparable object type is going to have its own definition for what less than or equal or greater to is. In the case of strings, for example, strings use what's called lexicographical comparison, which is a fancy way of saying that it takes each letter one by one, starting with the first letter, and compares the two sets of letters until it finds uh, a pair that is different, and then it checks to see which comes first. The other thing you have to know is that the, because of the way that letters are represented in Java, um, capital letters all come before all lowercase letters, regardless of where they are in the alphabet. So if you look here, for example, Bucky technically alphabetically comes before the word hello, but since hello is in caps and Bucky's in lowercase, hello is actually going to come first. So if we say str onecompare to str 2 we're going to get a negative value, because in this case, A comes before B. Okay, finally, just a couple of sort of tips to consider when you're going to be using equals or compare to. Again, remember, equals is defined for every object type, but compare to is only defined for comparables. Now, having said that, it's important to understand, even for the classes that have uh, equals defined for them, unless you write your own, if you're designing your own class, and you want to use the equals method, you really have to write your own version of the equals method. Because chances are, um, Java is not going to uh, compare the two objects the way that you would hope or want it to. So if you wanted to do equals correctly, you need to write your own equals. And if you wanted to do compare to, you definitely have to write your own compare to. Um, the good news is, the last thing I'll say for this particular lesson is, if you try to use um, one of the comparison operators, for the most part, you'll get syntax errors. If you try to compare things with greater than or less than or not equal to, the only exception to that is the equal equal that I pointed out to you. But generally speaking, um, you should just try to remember if you have an object, you have to compare it with a method. If you have a primitive, you have to compare it with an operator. Okay, you're all set.